Hello everyone, we're back. Still working on uh, the left side elevator. A couple things I want to talk uh, to you guys about. Got some NAS 1027 rivets, I believe. They're the OOPS rivets, but I was able to score some from Aircraft Spruce in the number three diameter instead of the four, which would be your OOPS for number three, if you were drilling it out. The reason I got them is for nut plates, and I'm sure we're gonna be dealing with nut plates a lot during this aircraft build. Uh, rather than dimpling the skin on thin aluminum, which would cause you to have to dimple the nut plate, we're just gonna slightly machine countersink that hole uh, very, very slightly. These NAS 1027s will just drop right in. So we're gonna be working around the trim tab access uh, for the servo area. I tend to leave the edge deburring until last. And the reason I do that is because if you ever make a mistake on any of the pieces and you end up having to scrap them, you already saved yourself a whole bunch of time because you didn't edge deburr the entire thing already. So once I'm sure that all the holes are drilled correctly, all my edge distances are good, and the part is basically ready for primer, then the last thing I do before primer is scuff the part and deal with the edges and get the edges as perfect as I can. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Remember to like and subscribe, and if you have any comments or you think I'm doing something wrong, please by all means, because I'm here to learn. This is not an instructional video. I'm just showing you guys my process and my adventure building my own airplane. Hope you enjoy it. So this is the nut plate that is being used for the trim tab servo cover plate area. It's for a number six screw. I'm just waiting for my number six dimple to come in from Cleveland Tools and I don't quite have it. So we are going to be dimpling the center hole only, which is this hole here, right? And so that dimple will fit into this dimple here, but it's these holes here which we don't want to be dimpling. And just to show you, I did do a test, and that's what the test looks like. I went with some new rivets. Purchased from Aircraft Spruce. Comes in a nice little kit. And here are the dash threes. Will be your oops rivets. I've actually already purchased these separately because I wasn't even really thinking about the dash threes, but now I can see the importance. I'll pull one out so you can have a look. And we'll compare the two. So here are the two rivets. Here we have our standard AD426 dash three. The bevel is a fair bit larger than the NAS 1097 right beside it. But the shank size is the same and the height is the same. By using this rivet here, it allows us to just slightly deburr or barely countersink this hole and this hole which will make it so the underside is not touched at all, thus allowing the nut plate to sit flush and the rivet to be installed as usual. This is what they look like from the top side. Standard. And here's your NAS 1097. Some people use a countersink tool, would be something like this. This is my zero flute in a cordless screwdriver and this definitely produces the best finish while deburring holes and slightly countersinking. But I, I wanted a more precise way of doing it consistently to all of these holes throughout this piece and more. So I set up my micro stop countersink, chucked it up into a scrap piece that was the same thickness as this piece which is 030 or 031 and I'll show you my results in that piece.
Okay, so here I have a, a scrap 709 rib, but it happens to have number 40s that are pre-drilled on the top. So I uh, quickly ran a reamer through them so my micro stop would fit. And basically this one here I did with my deburring tool. And it worked, but it was kind of try it test no it needs a little bit more okay yeah but and, and I can see you really easily going too far and you really don't want to compromise you cannot break through to the other side it's not like that rock song here is a 1097 in place so there we are with that NAS 1097 and I think that's an example of still needing just a, a little bit more see how it's just sitting proud there now if I pop it out and put it back in this one here and it's just I mean that's that's flush enough for me one thing I'm not too pleased with is this right here the ring that was left by my countersink tools I'm going to probably readjust the countersink with a single layer of tape which means probably just really two or three notches down I try to line my marks up so it's easy setting when I do this kind of stuff. But I do want to try to avoid these scratch marks. And I always try to do this kind of stuff if I've never done it before in a scrap piece because it just makes sense. But this is what the rivet looks like with it set a little shallow. There you go. Now you can see it's really nice and nestled in there. So again, this one was done by hand, and you can see I did not break all the way through. Just inconsistent. And then I basically dialed the micro stop in one or two notches at a time. And then again, that can probably use a bit more. So here's my machine counter sunk, and I just got some tape on it. So that should deal with our scuffing problem painters tape has worked real well for me for all sorts of stuff i put it on everything and it's making a really big difference as to the quality and finish of panels after they're all finished it really does that is pretty good I might just give her one more click sit nice and flush there you have it guys, installing NAS 1097 rivets for nut plates. Here's a quick comparison. I put a regular rivet in the other hole. Okay guys, that's what she's gonna look like. I would rivet it together for you, but like I said, I'm still waiting for my number six dimple die. There's that 1097 in there. And there's that rivet from the back side. So as you can see, that'll be a real nice easy set. And there are a couple of these nut plates that have to get shaved down because that edge right there interferes. Once I figure out which ones those are, um, and these are all hints that have been given to me from the Vans Air Force Forum. These rivets included. Saved a whole bunch of time and grief, I think. It's definitely going to be easier to set rivets, I mean, like that, than it would be to be setting them on dimpled nut plates like that. Alright guys, that's what I got for you this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Please share any comments, like I said. Love to be learning from y'all. Also, if you have any requests of content, things that uh, you guys, you know, have any questions that maybe by some fluke I might be able to answer for you, let me know and I'll try to document them for you. Have a good one. Cheers. Thanks for watching.